All right. Welcome everybody to uh, webinar Wednesday. We'll go ahead and kick off in a couple of minutes. Let everybody get a chance to log in. Welcome, everybody. We'll give a couple more minutes to let everybody get a chance to log in uh, before we go ahead and kick off our webinar today. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another webinar Wednesday. Uh, hope everybody's had a good morning so far to their Wednesday. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and kick off now. Again, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to add them in the chat or the Q&A section. We'll go ahead and get those addressed for you as soon as possible. So webinar Wednesday brought to you by Zintegra. Uh, as always, we have our Bronco giveaway. If you go to the URL link, 2022 is closed, but we'll be making announcements for the next coming year. So go ahead and keep updated with the link and you'll be able to get that information as soon as possible to enter and win, hopefully. So I'm your host today, John Splone. Uh, just to give you some background. I live in Baltimore. I have an extensive experience within the uh, digital cloud. Uh, and the digital workspace, virtual digital workspace. I've got uh, over 25 plus years. I recently worked with uh, Citrix for six plus years on the cloud enablement side of the house, working globally and enabling on the technical side with resources, both internally and customers and uh, the actual community itself on cloud technologies as it relates to the digital workspace. I've held different roles all the way from the typical admin uh, on up from consulting to educator to pre-sales, all that kind of neat stuff. So across the board, as far as technology is concerned in our community, I've got skills and dad jokes. I won't bore you with any of those. I know some people may, may enjoy those. Uh, and then I've got uh, three whippersnappers that definitely cannot stand them and uh, definitely try to possess that zenness between geek and nerd 
uh, both from my nerdism and my geekism from tech and comic books, all that kind of cool stuff. So Zentegra itself, let's get into who we are. If you're not aware, or if you are, this is a refresher for you. Zentegra is a services reseller and solutions partner uh, within the digital workspace area. So we work with all those solutions as far as cloud-based, um, the actual environment and helping with disruptive technologies, uh, enhancing your user experiences, and really building those foundations as far as being able to provide a sound solution to your, your customers, which are your users that are out there. So we were founded by Andy Whiteside, who you see up there on the top left, right? Yeah, that, that, that corner slide, the picture. Um, Andy was a sales engineer within Citrix who saw the need for enablement within our community that just wasn't happening from partners and vendors out there, which is where Zintegra came from. We're all about enabling you and your customers with the solutions that are out there to enhance those environments, to make sure that you're providing the best sound services that you can for your end user base. And then again, like I said, we, we handle uh, professional services from our standpoint. Uh, we also have hosting services that we can help you with, manage support services, and then around all these technologies that we present on webinar Wednesdays. So today we've actually got Keep It with us. Um, good friends from the team over there, Rick and Mark are here to give you some knowledge within Keep It as far as it's concerned. And not only are we a partner of Keep It to help you enable these solutions, but we ourselves at Zintegra are customers of Keep It. So we found that this solution is good for us. So we wanna share it and also be a partner and be able to help you understand your SaaS backup solution. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Rick. Give me one second here, Rick, and I will give you screen control. There you go, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. And Thanks again for being here, Rick. Of course. Thank you for having us. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending today. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to hear what we have to say, both from uh, Zintegra and here at Keep It as well. So thank you. And thank you for being such a great partner and customer, for that matter. Um, over at Zintegra, John, we appreciate it. And by the way, Andy was in the top right-hand corner. So great guy. What I wanna talk to you about today with Keep It is cloud native uh, software as a service, uh, both backup and recovery. And what does that mean as a solution? What we're gonna stress here more today is really about the recovery. What's our secret sauce? As technical and sophisticated and knowledgeable as Andy, and John and a lot of the technical folks over at Zentegra, their understanding and realizing what we have as a solution and what we bring to market really has a lot of validity for any size organization looking to protect and have the ability to recover SaaS data protection. Whether that's Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Google Workspace, or Salesforce. And just recently, the fifth solution that joined our family is Azure Active Directory. So let's get started. The company was founded back in 2007, backing up more B2C, you know, from a consumer to business, individuals, files, pictures, things that were documents that were very important to consumers and to individuals. And what the company built out at the time was a global infrastructure of data centers. And in the 2015 range, when Microsoft and other organizations really started to make some headway, moving a lot of the data from the traditional data centers into the cloud, Keep It wrote software, wrote code, and in 2015, 2016 launched um, our solution around the five workloads from Microsoft 365, Dynamics, um, Salesforce, Google Workspace. And with that growth came a lot of customer growth. 
we're excited to say we have over 2,000 customers in over 46 countries globally. I'm going to talk about the data centers here in a few minutes. We have all different verticals, all different shapes and sizes. Some of the most popular questions and concerns that customers have is around security. What I'm gonna to talk to you here about today and what you're gonna see in a very brief demo also from Mark Wallace is the ability of being able to back up and secure your SaaS data protection. And so I'm Rick Sloan. I'm based here out of the U.S. Mark Wallace uh, out of South Florida, exactly. Mark Wallace is out of North Carolina as well. And what we'll do is also show you how that also represents when we look at data centers. So we leverage an organization called Equinix. If any of you are using Zentegra for your hosted solutions, you're probably familiar with Equinix. Each one of our data centers that we have, have two data centers for redundancy. We're globally um, spread out. We just opened this month in March of 2022 up in outside of Toronto, Canada. So now for data sovereignty out of Canada, we can keep all of that data in-house. I know there were a few of you that were registered and looks like our attendees here up in the Canadian marketplace as well. For those of you in the US, we keep all of the data here in the US. If you're global, we have the ability of setting up your data centers based on what you need to in order to meet GDPR or other security requirements. Fully ISO 27001, SOC compliant. We are not a NOC, we are not a SOC. We do not see anybody's data. We store it, we host it, and we wake up every day being the best that we possibly can in order to help with the recovery and our, through our backup systems. So what we're hearing through a lot of the industry analysts is how we've become that disruptor in the marketplace. And there's a new paradigm in the marketplace. We're all, those of us that have been in the, in the industry for many years, are used to an on-prem solution. We're used to seeing hardware out there. And what's happened here in the marketplace with some of those legacy brand names that we've all seen throughout the years and especially into the backup is they've had to create an adjunct connector in order to take that data and put it into the cloud. And most of them are using the public cloud to do that. We have taken a little bit different path, how that's going to help with the storage and transfer rates, how that also holds true for the overall solution. And so with Keep It, we're an API first design. We're a cloud native solution built for the cloud. We have no hardware, no third party VMs, nothing else that's needed. You'll see with the demo that Mark goes through how simple it is to really navigate and also recover any type of a file, a user, or even a full system restore. We were built to be extremely cost effective. I'll go through some of the pricing and how that works a little bit later in a few slides from now. And security, as I mentioned, ever since the pandemic started back in March of 2020, we've seen an increase of bad actors in the marketplace. We've seen an increase of cybersecurity protection that everybody's looking to do. And what Gartner and Forrester and the ind industry analysts are all recognizing, keep it around, is how efficient, how our platform is, and how we're securing in an immutable format customers' data. And so, again, I'll go through a little bit detail, a, a little more detail here in a few minutes, a few slides from now. But we were built on a blockchain type technology using the Merkle tree system for security. We can advance. So where I want to highlight is really five key components, five key areas around cloud backup, and again, most importantly, the recovery aspect. 
And you'll see in this short demo of what we go through today from Mark again, where we, where we solve in the recovery aspect. We're gonna talk a little bit about the solutions, how the security works, what it means in storage. We're gonna define both cold and hot storage and what the compelling differences are between them. What's it mean to have a granular search? And then really where are the savings based on the platform from the design from the platform on up, why we offer some really great cost savings to organizations as well, like many of you here on the call. So the first I wanna talk about is really around the solution. As I've mentioned, you can see on the bottom, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Google Workspace, Salesforce, and just recently, we've now added as a free service as part of an essentials, the ability to back up your Active Directory as well. Looking at it really from a standpoint of Microsoft, which is the most popular that are out there, the Microsoft 365, we back up four workloads within Microsoft 365, Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Groups and Teams. And now recovery is not always created equal with many of the solutions that are in the market. For example, Teams Chats. Your Teams Chats, we back up the whole Teams channel and Teams Chats in a, ref, in a um, usable format. And you'll see from Mark in the demo how easy it is to recover when in Teams for a particular user. What uh, many other providers use is they'll supply the data back into a flat HTML type file. It's not very user friendly. And so that's where we pride ourselves on how we were built is a lot around the recovery aspect um, when you do have that situation, whether it's through the IT help desk or whether it's true through some other major catastrophe that might be happening within your organization. How do you recover? What's your recovery time objective? And how do you meet the needs of your clients, which are the employees of each of your companies? Now, I mentioned Azure Active Directory. Mark, again, you'll see on the dashboard when he goes through the demo, you'll see in a single pane of glass, any or all of the connectors that you may be subscribing to within the solution and within the instance. And so again, with Azure Active Directory, these are your company's crown jewels. These need to be protected. Analysts always talk about it all times, protect your Active Directory, they are most vulnerable. And so Mark will go through a couple of examples in this essential version of what we introduced that actually is a free offer right now is a freemium service with one of the paid solutions through Microsoft 365, Dynamics, Salesforce, or even Google Workspace. I mentioned storage. Now, many of you may have been working with storage throughout the years, but what does that mean when companies come to you and say, we're gonna store your data in hot storage, in cold storage, which cloud do they put it in? And how does that work on a recovery and a security standpoint? When we look at the storage aspect, keep it is always hot storage. I mentioned the platform that we built and I'll cover this again as kind of packaging up as a full solution. We were built on a blockchain type technology using Merkle tree that has lots of efficiencies, including how we store. And so we can store very cost efficiently. We also recover more efficiently and we also make it immutable to ransomware. Many organizations out there, in order to reduce your cost of what you pay, is usually after 30 days, they'll move the SaaS data into cold storage, thus increasing latency, your ability to have a quick 
timely recovery of a file of a user or full system restore. And so understanding the two really makes it easier if you're looking at some different options of what's in the marketplace and what's best for your particular organization. I've spoken a few times about recovery and we believe that recovery is extremely important and many customers through our demos one-on-one -on -one, talk about their IT organization, their help desk and how they need to help some of their staff recover a lost file um, a mailbox or do a full system restore. What you're going to see Mark go through is our granular search engine. The ability also to have role based access control. So, based on who will be handling the IT support, what level of control they have, we will help you determine based on the level of admin support will determine of whether they have the rights to look at a particular file before sending it back to a user or just sending a link in order to have that recovery. As you start to package this all together, there's a total cost of ownership that comes into play. You have to look at it from your hot storage versus cold storage. What does that mean on a cost standpoint, on the recovery standpoint, and also a security aspect? Ingress and egress fees. We are the world's only independent cloud that's dedicated to SaaS data protection. As I mentioned, we leverage Equinix, Equinix for the infrastructure. We own the stack. We've built that stack based on the blockchain type technology using Merkle tree. And because we own our own stack, because we have our own data centers, there are no ingress or egress fees. We very simply look at how many active users you have on your network. And the fee is based on the active user count. From that comes unlimited, uh, unlimited data and unlimited retention up to 99 years. So we tried to take shape into every organization, simplifying how those costs were from a total cost of ownership and giving full flexibility that you can be able to set your retention policy as low as 30 days and as much as up to 99 years you pick and choose the connector of where you want to select based on your company's policy and or also within a user group within your organization. So you could have your executives at a 10 year, but some of your employees may only have a one year retention. And that leads me into how the whole total cost of ownership really comes into play is around departed users. You see, we have departed users as the ability of really helping save you and your organization both time, budget predictability, as well as the value of not having to always keep buying new licenses. So hypothetically, if you have a thousand people in your organization, you'll subscribe into a thousand users within um, from Zentegra for your service. On average, companies turn about 10% of their employees per year. When you have a departed user, we will continue to back up your departed user's data for free for as long as you have set the retention policy for you then have the ability to reuse that departed user's license with your new hire. Thus, if you turn your employees about 10% per year, after 10 years, your solution is almost self-paid for based on, again, how long is your retention policies for within your company, and you have the constant cost savings that come along with that. Many times what you'll see in the marketplace is you'll have a departed user 
and other solutions will say to you, well, how large was that user's mailbox? Here's a discounted price for storing the departed user's data and there'll be a discounted price. You now need to go figure out how many users do you have at different levels of size of the mailboxes, calculate out what those expenses are going to be for the following year, and start to then calculate what your budgets will be in order to go into next year. We've simplified that complexity. I've talked a lot about security. It's a hot topic all over our industry in IT. And once again, we were built on a blockchain type technology using Merkle tree. That gives us some benefits over our competitors in the marketplace that then comes back to a huge value add for each of you. The way that it's stored, it's immutable from ransomware. It can't be altered once it's already been locked down. Why? Because each time a backup takes place, it gets locked down and it kind of fills and makes a block. And they're connected via a chain to the next time you do a backup. So even if a bad actor gets into your production network, your SaaS backup will be immutable and have the ability to really kick in more about your recovery time objective than it is to have to go hire a negotiator to pay the ransomware. And so having an immutable format highly helps protect yourself for now, but also for the future. And so tying together the solution, how you store, the type of security and the foundation that it's built on, the ease of use around the search engine, and total cost savings brings us to the ability of that full package around Keep It and the value that we bring to the table. Now, before we get into the demo for a few minutes, we've had a lot of organizations talk to us of, well, but I already have my Microsoft, I'm in the cloud. Isn't that good enough? Isn't that a good backup? And there's really seven key areas that we've looked at and are highlighting here to discuss why that might not be a great idea. With this, I'd also have to ask, are you all capable of writing a PowerShell script in recovery? Have you ever had to call the 800 number to Microsoft to help get support or recover any files or datas? Industry analysts like Gartner, Forrester, ESG highly recommend to keep your SaaS backup in a separate cloud from your production cloud. Now, we've never seen a public cloud get hit with ransomware. We know there's DDoS attacks all the time, but we have seen them go down. And here's your ability to diversify while also protecting yourself from a, cloud, a public cloud going down with your production network, from getting hit with ransomware attacks, from helping set your own custom retention policies within your organization. And so it's easy to listen to a lot of this, but one of the things that we'll go through here in a second is see the actual demo. As I've mentioned before, we have no hidden costs. It's predictable. It's a pay one price type solution based on the number of active licenses you have. There's volume discounts for the number of users. There's volume discounts based on how many years you want to go out, two years, three years, et cetera. And as I've mentioned, we include unlimited storage and up to 99 years, which is basically for all of our lifetimes, unlimited retention. So it makes it very predictable on how you can set your budgets going forward. So what I wanna do now is pause turn it over to Mark Wallace, our solutions engineer, to walk you through a demo 
of what it looks like and how simple of a solution it is to use. So Mark, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. And you need to unmute. Thanks for that, Rick. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. What I'm going to do in my portion of the presentation is give you a look from a perspective of ease of use, simplicity, and what we're going to talk, what we're going to call data usability. I mean, it's, it's very important that you have both a secure and reliable backup. But it's also very important that the data you restore in is a format similar to what it was when it was when it was backed up. Having to rely on the actual user base to do uh, configuration changes, do conversion on the data and the like, just doesn't make a lot of sense. And all of the things of which we're very keen. So what we're looking at here is the connectors page. These are simply examples of the uh, SAS, implement, SAS applications that I currently have running in this demo and environment. Azure Dynamics, Google, uh, Office 365. We also support Salesforce. It just doesn't happen to be here. The significance of this is in any given organization, multiple of these SAS applications may be in use and can be uh, maintained and managed within this single instance, if you will, the single pane of glass concept that makes it a lot easier to manage. Now, uh, what we're going to talk about is, from the standpoint, uh, most important is, of course, uh, what you'll see in the, uh, the the UI that I present here is simplicity and ease of use. But we're going to go ahead and focus quickly, uh, initially, on the uh, data usability. So what happens here? Um, this is the Office 365 backup, and we break it up into groups and teams, SharePoint, and users. All right. With respect to groups, uh, all these uh, workloads, we back up. We produce a very granular backup, which means the actual objects within these workloads get backed up uh, individually and can be restored individually. So rather than, for example, in the case of group and teams, having to, having to restore only an entire channel or an entire uh, team, we can restore an individual uh, an individual uh, post or a chat message independent of any of the others. So let's take a look at that. So I can come into groups and teams. And what you'll see now is, and this, uh, this UI that you see is going to be identical for all the workloads. I'm going to come down to the sales and marketing team. And I'm looking for a particular channel. We're looking at the monthly reports channel. And as you can see, I've got files, posts, tabs, wiki here. Maybe I'm, 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 I'm interested in only an individual post. So here are the chat messages that we have stored for this particular channel. Now, I can preview these messages if my user role permits it. So I can open up this chat, and as you can see, it's well formatted. I can look at the next one. That one's well formatted as well. So at this point, you now have access to, within the backup, individual chat messages. So I could, for example, right here, I could come here. I could restore this chat message or I could restore a prior version if it happens to exist, all right? I could also download it in a text-based format if you wish. I could restore multiple chat messages. I could restore an entire channel. I could restore an entire group and team. The point being here, it's very flexible now. And what it allows you to do is see just how granular the backup can be. All right. But from a restore perspective, this doesn't provide a lot of context. So for that, we're going to go to the team's tenant. Once I get my toolbar out of the way here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right. So here is the team's uh, tenant. And we're down here with sales and marketing and monthly reports. Now, the whole purpose of our recover, our, our granular backup, is so that we can provide a re granular restore. And specifically, we want to, to the extent that Microsoft will allow us, produce a restored object that's virtually indistinguishable from the original. So what you see here are the four text uh, chat messages that were maintained within the backup. Now, you notice this last one here looks a little different format wise. All right. Well, here, the MOD, this, this chat message, it was actually deleted and we restored it using the Keep It platform. There's a couple of reasons why it looks a little different. 
One, the MOD administrator, this is the service account running the Keepit platform. The Microsoft APIs will not allow us to post on behalf of another user. So we post on behalf of the service account that we're using to run the platform. But knowing that this could cause problems within the team environment, we provide this additional information so that there is no or there is no or little doubt to any of the team members that this was originally posted by Megan Bowen. In addition to trying to produce an object identical uh, to the original, this is an actual chat message. You can reply to it, you can forward it, just like you would the original. We're not going to refer you, like uh, Rick referred to, is going to the Files tab and having to go through uh, renderings of HTML versions of, these, of, the, of the chat messages. One, it requires you to go through a, a workflow process and actually find them, and two, make some sense of them and then go ahead and deal with them uh, in abstentia, if you will. So what we've done here is, again, to the extent Microsoft will allow, provide a object, restored object, that's virtually indistinguishable from the original. OK? Let's jump to another, another example here. All right? Something probably a bit more common for most of you, um, lost emails. So I'm going to come into users, which is both Exchange and OneDrive. All right, and I've got a list of all these users here. So I'm going to go to my friend here, uh, Megan Brown Bowen, and she's lost an email. So I may be on the, I may be a, a minister on the uh, on the help desk, and I know it's Outlook. Now she's indicated that it's an inbox. Uh, that that's helpful, but it's not necessary because of the search capabilities that you're going to see. But to make the display a little easier to follow, I'm going to go ahead and sort here by subject line. And now I can do a sort, uh, a search on the partial uh, subject line that she gave me, Azure AD. Now you'll notice that I misspelled Azure AD, but our intelligent search uh, was able to find all the associated uh, subject lines that I'm looking for. So now you see all the emails in the backup, this version of the backup, they correspond to live emails within the tenant, the exchange tenant. Now, Megan indicated that she can't find the email. It's most likely deleted. So in that regard, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to toggle the deleted items view, which now shows emails that exist in the backup, but don't exist in the tenant, i.e. those that have been deleted. So in this particular case, it makes it a lot easier to identify this particular object. And again, if my, permission, if my permissions are associated for this, I can go ahead, I can view the email, and then I can go ahead and perform the restore for her for of this or a prior version. Now, another scenario would be access to uh, OneDrive files. All right. So let's jump back to users. Now, remember here for this display, I've got the deleted items view toggled on here. And you'll see some deleted users. Deleted, inactive, we call them departed, ones that are no longer currently uh, have a valid license within Office 365. These will be maintained within the environment to the extent that you set up the retention period. So if the retention period is three years, even Cameron's white emails will be allowed to age for three years, all right, after which they'll be, they'll be removed like anybody else's. But this is not something that has to be set up specifically. We don't require a license from Microsoft. You don't require a license from us. That's uh, as a courtesy, you being a customer. Now I'm going to scroll down to another one of these so-called uh, deleted individuals. Irvin Sayers left the company, and the manager uh, places a call into support. There wasn't a typical handoff of the OneDrive files, and he requires access. So one way we could handle this as an administrator, I could come in here, I could go into OneDrive, I can dive into the documents folder, maybe I now want to walk through file after file. Um, and again, I must have permission to do this until we can identify the file or files that the individual needs access to. All right. Now, uh, in most cases, it's more than one file. It often spans multiple folders. In fact, in, in reality, in this particular case where you're handing off files from a, from a user that's no longer active, they often don't know what it is they're looking for. They'll just recognize it when they see it. So this is the perfect example to provide them the opportunity to utilize self-service, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back one level. And I'm going to create what we call a shared link to the documents folder within that OneDrive. Now, I'm going to make a copy of that. 
I could go ahead and set an expiration on this link. All right, make it a uh, an hour. I could put a password on it if I so chose to. All right. Now what I can do, and excuse my mouse here. Now I can send this link to the requester or the manager in this particular case, allowing that individual access to the document, to the objects stored based on that link into the backup. So now the manager can, at his leisure, walk through here, look at any number of files that they want, determine if in fact this is the one that he wants, all right? He can even go into a subfolder, look at files there as well. So it's important, a couple of things are important here. The first is you don't have to tie up a support resource to do this. And two, because of the, the way the index is built for our storage mechanism and the simplicity of this UI, you can actually have end users doing their own restores if that fits your uh, use case. All right. Now, uh, one other potential use case if you want to expand this just a tad. Unfortunately, ransomware is a reality. Um, uh, services do go down instances or applications become unavailable. In a case such as that, and as Rick pointed out, the last thing that you want is to have the backup data for your instance in the same uh, architecture so that if one goes down, they both go down. The fact that the backup, uh, the Keep It platform is backed up within our own private cloud means it's available independent of the production instance. So in the case of an outage, you could provide users with links such as these that would give them access to the latest backup version of their data. That means they could, to some extent, continue working while the production instance is trying to be brought back online. Now, you could argue that's a very simplistic view, that there are more, compli more complex issues involved, and the kind of data that you may have available may or may not match up to that, and that's agree. But it's certainly a better prospect than your employees sitting in the break room drinking lattes and emptying your candy machine. All right, one more. So let's jump to SharePoint. Now, issues with SharePoint sites are handled very simply. You have problems with the SharePoint site, you simply restore it from the backup. Well, one of the reasons, well, there's two reasons for that. One, it's fast and easy. Two, you don't have any other choice until now. So the granularity, the depth of which we go to to back up an object, as you've seen in the prior uh, workloads, also applies to SharePoint. So I can dive, uh, drill down into this company. I can drill down into permissions. I can come into groups. I can look at the L company's members. So I'm basically now looking at a permissions object. You could potentially restore the permission objects to a SharePoint site, thus reestablishing access for users to that site. Then the users could perform triage and determine what happened and how to fix it rather than simply overriding it and hoping for the best. Okay, now if, it, if a determination is made that overriding the entire site is the appropriate uh, method forward, well, we can certainly do that. All right, so in this particular case, I can, like you saw in the other workloads, I can restore this or a prior version, but I'll also give you an additional choice. In addition to restoring it in place, you can also restore it as a new site. So what this allows you to do now is stand up one or more versions of the site side by side. So now you can make, uh, you can do some investigation and determine um, from, a from a perspective of knowledge, which direction that you're going to pursue makes the best sense. And either one or both of them could be supported via this mechanism. All right. So now back to the admin, just to show that from an administrative perspective is very easy to manage. Uh, we saw the connectors. Again, this is simply the listing of the instances that we have running. The dashboard gives you a little bit more holistic view into what's going on within the, uh, the SAS instance. So with Office 365, what's in this last backup? When's the next one start? Some recent recovery jobs and statistics and some backup job information. Now the job monitor is high level activity. This will show it based on the connector or the SAS application that we're running, as you can see, Azure AD Office Dynamics. So you'll see things in here like backups, restores, item restores, et cetera. Now you can download this information or via our APIs, you can export it and feed a third party application that you may have in house that you want to populate with this information. 
the public links section. This is simply where we list all those links that I showed you how you can make. The main purpose of this is so that the administrators can confirm that best practices are used and we're not doing things like creating links without any expiration. From a user perspective, this is where you'd create users for the Keep It platform. These have nothing to do with Office 365. And as you can see, they're all role-based. So what that means is you can be very flexible in how you create access for individuals to the platform. Here is all the type functionality that you get, and these are the user uh, accounts. So for example, if you have a situation where you want a level one support tech doing restores, you might want to rethink that only because what happens if they're restoring emails from HR or from finance? Well, if that's the situation, you could give them what we call a limited support role. That means that they can locate the object like you saw me search for it, and they can restore it, but they can't preview it, they can't download it, they can't create a link to it. So they have no access to the content within that object, thus maintaining security. Now, for a level two or level three individual, they need more breadth and functionality. You simply give them uh, a full support uh, role. They can pretty much do everything that I'm showing you how to do here. All right, so back to here. The audit log, this is simply a, a more detailed listing on a user by activity basis. So what you can see here are things, for example, like you entered a folder, you looked at a file, you created a uh, share, you deleted a uh, password or what have you. And again, download as a CSV or you can export via the APIs. Now, as Rick mentioned earlier, um, being based in uh, Copenhagen, we uh, are painfully familiar with GDPR and all its numerous uh, initiatives like right to be forgotten. So we also have that deployed here. These are two objects that have been labeled RTBF, right to be forgotten. Now, from an interpretation perspective, that simply means they cannot be restored or recovered. All right, so what we've done is, is we've uh, flagged these, which means these are no longer available in the index, so you can't find uh, or have any understanding that they exist. And uh, second, they cannot be restored. Now, since we have an immutable data store, we can't delete them, we can't add to them, or we can't change them, but we can make them unrecoverable, which is what you have here. Now, if for some reason you need to change that access, if you're one of the highest level administrators, you can remove the flag, the label, and then they'll be returned to the index and they can be either restored, deleted, or what have you. And then finally, everybody's very uh, conscious about security. So we support uh, you know, single sign-on, um, all the major players uh, certified on uh, Azure AD as well as Okta. And I'll pass it back to you, Rick. Mark, I, and Rick, sorry, I have a quick question for you. Uh, when we were going through the user accounts that uh, you were showing from the administration platform, that's me as the customer of those users. There is no, just to clarify, there is no keep it accounts that are in there to access my data, correct? That's correct. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Yeah, and you know, John, you bring up a good point. And I'm going to reiterate again, we are not a knock. We are not a sock. We don't have access to any of the data. We built the infrastructure in a safe, secure environment to be able to protect the data for the individual customers. Perfect. So I want to kind of wind this down a little bit and we'll open it up to q and I spoke a lot about our solution, what we do, how we protect. John validated on top of Zentegra being not only a great solution provider, but also a customer. Mark showed you the demo. The extra credibility that we're so proud of and we wake up every day focused on is being the best in the space that we are. And some of the industry analysts like Gartner, Forrester, Expert Insights have all given us strong accolades and awards of who we are as a SaaS backup and most important recovery solution in the types of solutions and workloads that we help protect. Most recently, these were all done during Q4, just within the last couple of months. Forrester report came out in uh, late December. 
with Forrester because Gartner does not have a magic quadrant for SAS. Forrester has released the New Wave report, and we're proud to say Keep It is ranked as not only the top three, but within the top 10 also globally of being both on executing our strategy, but also having the solution itself to help protect organizations, environments like yourselves. We at any time in the future can do a deeper dive with each of you, whether you contact your Zentegra account executive, you contact us, hit info off of the web, we'd love to be able to go into a deeper dive. We can easily set up a proof of concept if needed after the demo as well, so that you can take a look and kind of take it out for a test drive. And just as a reminder, we're the world's only independent cloud that's dedicated to SaaS data protection. So with that, I'm gonna pause and John, bring you back in, see if there's any questions at this point. You're muted. I'm a rock star. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, now, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. Um, just give a couple of minutes here if I can yeah. take back control over Rick. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I see. So something that came in is around our security also on how we protect in transit. And so we do use 256-bit um, for security, both in transit and at rest. at rest. Great question. And I know that's something that pops up a lot on one-on-one -on -one conversations within uh, end customer demos and meetings. Great. Awesome. Well, Rick, Mark, thank you so much. Um, just want to remind everybody about the Bronco giveaway. And those of you that are still online with us right now, I'm gonna hand this back over to Kathy because we are going to do our Wheel of Winner. Hello, Winners. everybody. Yes, uh, thank you so much for participating today in our webinar. We've got, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, hopefully you can see our wheel. There we go. Everybody's name's in there. I'm going to uh, spin the wheel two times and we'll get some winners here. So here's the first one. All right, we have Alan P as a winner. All right, we're going to do one more time. Here we go. And then we have Alec. Oh, no. Frenchy. Congratulations. Thanks. Kathy, tell us, tell us what they won. <laughs> yes, exactly. I forgot to mention that. Uh, every, uh, the two winners are receiving a $50 Amazon gift card. So congratulations Ooh. to the winners. Congrats. And thank you again for everybody being here today. Uh, we do appreciate it on webinar Wednesdays. If you can hand it back over to me real quick, Kathy. Sweet. Okay. So with that said, taking control back here, I want to thank everybody for attending today. Rick, Mark, again, I thank you so much. Uh, I know we've, we've spent a lot of time together doing these things. So I appreciate you guys being here again today to cover Keep It With Us. And uh, to reemphasize what Rick had said, if anybody uh, is looking for f further information about what's going on or want to explore the solution better, you can always reach out to us or Rick and team to be able to take a look at Keep It For Your Organization. So with that, I'm going to let everybody go and you guys have a great remainder of your Wednesdays. Thank you again. Thank you.